Welcome to San Francisco, the birthplace of the United Nations. My name is Steve Rifkin, and I've been involved with Peace Child for many years, here in Washington, D.C., and in Moscow, Russia, where later you'll be meeting my good friend and fellow musician, Stas Nauman. This is the Opera House in San Francisco, where diplomats from 50 nations drafted the U.N. Charter in two short months between April and June of 1945. The outside of the Opera House here on Van Ness Avenue hasn't changed very much since 1945, but the interior has been completely refurbished. This is how it looks today. This is how it looked in 1945. The Opera House and the Veterans Building are next door to one another, and it was in the Veterans War Memorial Hall that they all signed the UN Charter on June 26, 1945. Edward Stettinius for the United States, a very young Andrei Gromyko for the USSR, and young Christian Smuts for South Africa. Smuts was the one who had written the famous preamble. We, the peoples of the United Nations, determined to save succeeding generations from the scourge of war, which twice in our lifetime has brought untold sorrow to mankind, to regain faith in fundamental human rights, in the dignity and worth of the human person, in the equal rights of men and women and of nations large and small, and to promote social progress and better standards of life for all in larger freedom. Hi, my name is Lucia Efros, and for many years, I was the administrator working with Steve Rifkin for Peace Child in the United States. I'm both delighted and honored to be part of this important 75th anniversary of the United Nations. One of the most unusual events during the drafting of the Charter was when the 500 diplomats from all over the world climbed on buses outside of the Opera House and traveled across the Golden Gate Bridge to Muir Woods, where here in Cathedral Grove, they held a memorial service to the U.S. President Roosevelt, Chief Architect of the United Nations who died just 13 days before the UN Charter Conference opened, a small plaque commemorates the event. Jan Smuts gave the address that day, saying, Here, among these giant redwoods, this great man will find fitting and congenial company, the company of giants in a temple of peace, a cathedral, many of the pillars of which were standing when Magna Carta was written. President Roosevelt's personal history was an inspiration to all who suffer under misfortune, a call to use adversity as a stepping stone to a higher self. He was the personification of the best of America and the carrier of a message of hope and good cheer from the new world to the old. Europe lies in ruins, and if the United Nations is to last, it must restore Europe to a condition of spiritual, political, and material order. This work of binding up the wounds of war through the effective implementation of Roosevelt's vision will be the greatest monument that the nations can build to him and to the America that he represented. If President Roosevelt was the architect of the UN, his wife, Eleanor, was the first United States ambassador to the organization and one of its greatest servants. 